Let's see how true. Um, um, two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm the one who uses it the most, so it's kind of mine. It's wrong. Yeah? I guess you get your wish. Yeah. Don't annoy me, please. My wish will become true. Yes. Yes. Move your bag. Thank you. Just move the bag. You don't need to move the chair. Just move the bag. Come on. Uh, Alright. I said don't annoy me, please. The second derivative. <coughs> Last time we saw how to calculate this, we know how to get this. Now we're going to look at something called the second derivative, which we write like this. Other ways to write it, like this, or like this, etc. So you could probably guess what the second derivative is, but what it is, is the derivative twice. So the second derivative is the derivative of the derivative of y. So it's, like the name suggests, the derivative twice. Why do we do it twice? Oh, no, no, you'll see now. I'm building it up. Oh. And then there'll be a dramatic reveal. And then it'll be like, ah, yes. Uh, okay, so, uh, let's have a look at an example here. 
Uh, thank you. So here's a simple example to get started with. If y equals x cubed, what's the first derivative? 3 x squared. And so the second derivative would be 6x. All usual here, no, nothing too strange. But um, why is the second derivative useful? So we'll have a look at the reason now. So just write this much down, please. Okay, you have that? Yeah. Can I scroll down? Yeah. So, uh, a bit of a recap. Here's x, here's y, and then here is the uh, function y equals f of x. So in red is the derivative. Here it's positive, here it's positive, here it's zero, here it's negative, negative zero, zero positive. positive. So if you were to graph that, where you put the derivative on the y-axis <coughs> and x on the x-axis, um, when x is over here, positive, negative, or zero for your derivative? Uh, if x is here? No. The derivative is positive uh, okay. because it's going up. Uh, okay. So, here the derivative is a positive. And what happens as I move from left to right? The derivative, is it increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. No, oh. decreasing <laughs> because when it's here, it's zero. zero. So the derivative is decreasing until it reaches zero about here. Then what happens? No, it's decreasing. It's becoming negative. And then it becomes zero. So it decreases to become negative, and then it must increase again. Uh, we need to get zero. So it's zero here, negative, 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 and then levels back off and becomes zero again about here. And then from here, what is it? Yeah, so I know it looks weird, but that was supposed to be a quadratic. Okay. Now, in blue, let's have a look at the second derivative. So the second derivative is the derivative of the derivative. So it's the slope here. So here, positive or negative slope? Negative. negative. So over here it starts in the negative. Negative, negative, negative. Here, no. zero, <coughs> positive, positive, positive. So it looks like this. It goes from negative, it's zero here. And then afterwards, it's positive. Isn't zero twice? No, no, it's only zero once. Oh. The derivative. Yeah, yeah. This is cubic. This is quadratic, and this one is linear. Linear. So what does the second derivative tell us? Well, notice here, when it's negative, that's this part of the graph. And notice here, when it's positive, that's this part of the graph. And here, when it's zero, that's this part of the graph. This shape here is like a hill shape, isn't it? Whereas this shape here, the valley shape, a U shape. So what the second derivative can tell us is something about the shape. 
We have technical words here. This shape is not called a hill shape. Does anyone know the name of this shape in maths? A shape like this? Its um, name? Um, mm. But both of these can be called parabolic. So I need a word to distinguish between the two. And the other one is quadratic parabolic as well, so no. Getting closer, but no. Okay, can I scroll down? Yep. This shape is called a concave shape. Don't pretend you knew it. Um, <laughs> No, it's too late now. Too late now. Uh, this shape is called convex. And this happens when um, the derivative is negative. And this one happens when the derivative is positive. This is an important fact. Please write it down. Hmm. Can I see the like uh, the graph? Again? Previously? Yeah. Uh. Should it be above like that that quadratic line? Should it be like that the, the point where it first becomes zero? Should it be above? Should it be above? The, these two points? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. These are right. These have to match up. Look, they have to match up with where it was. Uh, Oh yeah, it's not perfect, but it needs to match up with the stationary points on the previous graph, like that. Yes? Yes. Scroll down. Mm -hmm. This one? Mm -hmm. This point here matches up with this point. I'm happy for you. Okay, can I scroll down? Yeah. Right. Uh, let me give you a cubic here. Right. Or I'll steal your fish and eat it for lunch. Uh, right. 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 24x plus 30. Last time, how did we find the turning points? What do you do to find the turning points? Uh, dy. dy dx equals 0. I want you to find the two turning points here. Give me the two turning points. Um, should only take you a minute or two. So. You need the calculator. A bit of brain power might do. Exactly. 
two points, x and y. Okay, ready for this one? Okay. Derivative equals 6x squared plus 18x minus 24. Yes? And we want this to equal 0. I'll divide by 6. I have two answers. <coughs> x plus 4, x minus 1. So x equals minus 4 or 1. Uh, did we get the y's? Yeah. yeah, what's the first one? No, no, 1, one or, or 2. two. Like this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if I was to look at the graph, there's one point way up here, and then there's one point here. We have a feeling we know which one's the maximum and which one's the minimum, but we can't be certain. This one's probably the maximum, and this one is probably the minimum. But as you learned last time, sometimes the graph might surprise you, because last time we had a graph, I think... Um, you know, we had a graph like this that had two turning points. So you might think, ah, this one was the maximum and this one the minimum. But if you remember the graph, they were both maximums. Because the graph, went, I think it went something like, uh, uh, so, something like this. So there were two maximums. So my point is, just because this one is higher doesn't mean it's a maximum. It could actually be something else. So... How can we check? Well, we can check by using the second derivative. The second derivative is 12x plus 18. If I put this value of x in here, um, I'll get um, a positive or a negative number. I'll get a negative number. What will I get? Minus, four, minus 30. Or... If I put this one in, I get 30. So this answer here has a, I'll write a little negative here, negative second derivative, and this answer here has a positive. Previously you learned negatives have a concave shape and positives have a convex shape. So if this point is negative, it's concave, which means the graph has this shape here. And if this one is a positive, it means it's convex, which means it has this shape. In other words, minus 4, 1, 4, 2 is a maximum, and then 1, 17 will be a minimum then. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, we know that the first equation is 2x cubed, so it's a cubic graph. Yeah. And well, that it's positive. True. All true. But sometimes you might be surprised. Um, if it's not cubic. No, no. Even if it is a cubic. If you only have one turning point. Yeah, but we know that when the inflection is... Look, in this case it's simple, so we do know from the graph. But I'm giving you a simple example first. So you have a method for more difficult ones. So it becomes like this. Like this. Yes, it would look like this. So yes. This would be a concave and this would be a... Uh, concave uh, and like convex, yes. Concave and convex. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm just giving you the method. And in the exam, they sometimes give you cubics and they want you to verify its maximum or minimum. So they need some verification like this. Then we show them a table, 2.1.4, 1.5. You could just do what I recommend doing, or you could try to be awkward. Please choose now. You have two options in front of you. Teacher-friendly approach, 
awkward student approach. Now choose carefully. You will go. Be quiet. Um, yeah, no, I know in some countries and syllabi they use tables to verify if it's maximum or minimum. Um, I, I think I remember it seeing in the French syllabus they have a table where they go like positive, zero, negative, and so on. Uh, that's fine, but I've never seen this in the marking scheme for the exam. So the person who's writing the exam is expecting to see the answer done this way, and at the end of the day, you want to make the person marking your exam happy because they're the one giving you the mark. But there's nothing wrong with what you're saying. Just not recommended. Uh, okay, so do you have this written down? We'll do another one. So what we've learned is that the second derivative can be used to decide which is the maximum and which is the minimum. Okay? Um, I'll give you one to try and then I'll do it. I can scroll down a bit. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's try one, uh, a simp I'll give you a simple one and then I'll give you a hard one. So try this one. I want the turning point and to tell me if it's a maximum or a minimum. So, turning point and if it's a max or a min. Ah, Lucas, you made it. Okay, you have an answer? Mm -hmm. yeah. Derivative equals 2x minus 12, which equals 0. So x equals, and y will equal... Minus 54. The second derivative is 2, which is positive, which is con spec. Yeah. Spec. Which means it's this shape, which makes this point minimum or maximum? Minimum. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you a harder one now. Leave me alone. Be good. I'll give you a hard one now. So, try this one. <coughs> Turn in points and if they're max or min.
um, shall we use two significant number or three significant figures? What? Everything is all right now. You have your calculator. Yeah, no, no, no. No, I, I understand such such a fear would really shake someone up. The thought of losing their calculator. Okay. okay. Uh, we have an answer here. Yeah. Yeah. So first, um, let's get the derivative. Well, actually, no. First, let's simplify a little bit. 16 log x minus 4x plus 12. Mm -hmm. Now let's get the derivative. 16 over x minus 4. Um, what the heck? Oh my goodness, I did two steps at once. So sorry. Uh, minus 2x squared plus 12x mm -hmm. minus 7. Now we'll get the derivative. Uh, 16 over x minus 4x plus 12 equals 0. Divide by 4. 4 over x minus x plus 3 equals 0. Multiply by x. 4 minus x squared plus 3x equals 0. X equals 4 and minus 1. Um, you're giving me the answers nice. So x is... What would you say? Yeah. And minus 1. And then the matching y is? Uh, y is... 31.2. Yeah. Which is maximum and minus 21. Yeah, well, let's check which is which. Yeah. So, to check which is the maximum and the min, we need the second derivative here. So, the second derivative is. Now, here I should change this into x minus 1. So, this becomes minus 16x minus 2. This one becomes. Minus four, and this one becomes zero. So this is minus sixteen over x squared minus four. Okay, let's check the first point. If I put this point in, do I get a positive or a negative? Um, I get a negative. I get minus four, right? Or minus five, is it? Minus five. And then what about if I put this point in? I get. Uh, minus 20. Both are negative, so both are concave, which means both are maximum points. So on the graph they look like this. Well, actually, uh, this one is quite low and this one is quite high. So the graph should look something like this, I think. Well, can a graph have a, like a What do you mean exactly? Like, can it have different maximum points? Yeah, we have to... The problem with the word maximum is it needs an adjective, which we'll talk about now in a moment. So, um, let me just graph this. Um, what was the original? Y equals log x power 16... Omar, are you talking? You're distracting me. Okay. Where was the first maximum point? Minus 1 and minus 20 something. The second maximum? 4 and... Matches up, doesn't it? 
But as Ian was saying, uh, there's a little bit of a problem with vocabulary. They can't both be the maximum. So we need uh, an adjective to help us separate which is like the real maximum and which is the fake maximum. Uh, so we use the words local and global. So um, here's an example. Um, we'll have a graph that goes like this. Uh, no. So this has many maximums. Here, here, <coughs> here, and here. But only this one is the true maximum that's higher than all the other points. Oh yeah, thank you. This one here, yeah. Only this one is the true maximum uh, which we call it a global maximum. Whereas these ones are only maximum compared to their neighbours. So these points here, we call them, what do you think? Local. Yeah, they're only local maximums. So this one's a bit like the <coughs> true maximum. So what do you think we call this one? this one and this one yeah local minimums and then um, where is the global minimum yeah but not really because this continues down so it doesn't really have a global minimum except for minus infinity so, this type of graph has local max, local min, global max, but not really a global min. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Can I scroll down? Can you just go back to the answers for one? Previously? For this one, yeah. Well, not this one, this is just a yeah, different yeah, graph. Gotcha. Um, the numbers here? Yeah, I'm not getting this. Now, you recognize that the graph matches up what I got. So you must have made a mistake somewhere. I can give a couple of guesses. Maybe you used LOG instead of LN. Roll on minus one. Minus five. The X, the X. Yeah, both and minus one. Yeah, the X. Yeah. And the Y? The Y is um, only the plus. Yeah. It's not X in your head. Yeah, only this one you use yeah, for the Y. And you so let's find out what happened then. Okay, so which we'll try the 4 first. Log 4 power 16. We agree. Minus 2 times 4 power 16. No, sorry. Two, four, uh, 4 power 2. Plus, what's next? 12 times 4. What can I say? Wait, what? Yeah, okay. I don't know what's going on. Uh, okay, did we draw this? Yeah. Okay, um, I'll try another one. So when the second derivative is lower than zero, it's a maximum. Yeah, and greater than zero is a minimum. Does this graph have a global minimum? Does it have a global maximum? No. Local minimum? No. Yes, local minimum. Local maximum? No. no. Where is the local minimum? Local minimum here. And it's also a global minimum. It's both. Oh. It's a minimum in the neighborhood mm -hmm. and also globally. Okay. <coughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, another type of problem. Can I scroll down? Um, do we have to pay to so like a global or local in the... Okay. Now, you know, 
in the exam of the last nine years, which is 18 exams, they've never once <coughs> asked you to decide if it's local or global, but the words local and global are used on the syllabus, so I'll mention them in class, but they've never asked it in the exam. Um, they could ask it, but I feel like if they do ask it, they'll make you draw a graph before they ask you. So you can see it from the graph that you draw. Yeah. Okay, um, let's continue. Let's have um, another example now. Um, let's say something like y equals 2x cubed minus 12x squared plus 22x minus 12. <coughs> Uh, so, Faisal, as you were saying, we know the shape of this graph, yeah. so this graph will have some shape, uh, we'll say something like this, whatever. So the higher value of the x we get is the minimum. The higher y value. The higher x, yeah. The higher x value would be the minimum, yes. Yeah. Anyways, for this question I want to know when is y increasing. So, let's have a look at the graph. Is it increasing here? Yes, 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 yes. No, no, no. Is it increasing here? No, it's decreasing. Yes, yes. Yeah, and it's increasing yes. here. So we want to know where and where is it increasing? So the answer will be when it's less than this number, whatever that number is, and when it's more than this number. But in between, the curve is decreasing. So we don't want this part. Yes? Is this like, I have a question. Uh, does it, do these graphs like cubic? No, no, cubic's up, so down, up down once. Yeah. Oh, but the quadratic graph you really explained this, but then shouldn't it be decreasing? So how can it become like increase and miss a zero? No, no. You see, zoom out a tiny bit here. So yes, yeah, sorry. So uh, on the original graph, it's decreasing from the top. Mm -hmm. so decrease. Wait. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, so put your pen there. Yeah, uh, it's decreasing there. Yeah. Here. So look at where the decreasing part is on that. Yeah, it's in between there. Oh, ooh. The value, is it positive or negative if it's under the axis? Oh, I'm like a negative. So it's the right sign. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we want to know where is this increasing, which means we want to know where is the slope positive, which means we just want to know when is dy dx positive. Because remember, derivative means slope, so we want when the slope is positive. So what's the derivative here? 6x squared uh, minus uh, 36x plus 22, positive. Yeah, what the heck, Stephen? No, I... Uh, 24, is this? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I can cream this up a little bit. What can I divide by? Two. Just 2. 3x squared minus 12x plus 11 is greater than 0? Yeah. Do you remember how to solve these? Mm -hmm. We'll draw a very quick quadratic with the two roots. I'll be lazy and solve on the calculator. Yeah, but it's still going to require solving this quadratic, so... No, like instead of making it an inequality... No, this is the way for the exam. It has to be equality because you need a range of values. Yeah, a range. 6 plus root 3 over 3. That's a bit weird. And then the other one is 6 minus root 3 over 3. Hmm. Yeah, no. Did I write this down right? Yeah, 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 that's right. Okay. Um, so, do I want that's above that's or that's below? See, that's the thing. They're both positive values. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's just a rough graph. Do I want above or below? Below. Above. Above. Oh. 
So I want this part and this part. Okay. Yeah. So the answer is x must be less than 6 minus root 3 over 3 or x must be greater than 6 plus root 3 over 3. Now I'll explain this more with a graph now in a moment. So if you can just write this down. Yeah, what are the two decimals? Uh, 0 0.77 and 0 0.77. No, 0 0.77. That's 2.6. They're not both the same number. These are two different numbers. One point four two. And two point eight one point four two and what's the other one? Two point five eight. No, no, the amount doesn't matter there. Can I go graph this? Right, watch. Uh give me the cubic please. What was it? Y equals <coughs> Oh yeah, I gave it the light value. Minus twelve x squared. 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 Twenty-three. Minus twelve. Right. Let's graph this. When will it be increasing? So um, it's increasing all the way up until here, which is around about one point five. That's this answer. And then it's decreasing, so we don't want this piece. And then it's increasing again from here, which is about 2.5, which is my second answer here. So the answer is correct. It matches up with the graph. Yeah? Okay. Um, can I do another one, if you want to try? So... But yep. when the question has to determine the nature of it, what, what does it mean? Nature means if it's a max or a min. No, yeah. you need to the y no because I just said when is y increasing. I don't care what the y is. I just want to know where will it be increasing. Right, try this. When will y equals 2x cubed minus 12x squared plus 22x minus 12 be convex. No. No. Okay, we'll see. Right, convex means this shape. <laughs> When will we have this shape? When the second derivative is... Positive. <laughs> so, uh, we have first derivative is 6x squared minus 24x <laughs> plus 22. Second derivative is 12x minus 24. Yes? And we want this to be positive, which means we want 12x to be bigger than 24, which means we want x to be... Yeah. That's not what you said. You said when x is at 2. This is the answer you gave me. I said, yeah, when it's 
2.58. Yeah, when it is. No, when it's more than x, when x is more than so 2. This is convex. The they whole, the they whole region. They don't want the turning point when the turning point is a minimum? No. That's what I understood. Yes, I know. That's why I was smiling. Yeah, but... When will... Not... Uh, what? Not at what point is the minimum. Yeah, but isn't want it like the linear after? Yeah, we'll talk about the graph now in a moment. So the answer is when x is bigger than two. Let's see if that makes sense on the graph. So let's uh, zoom in a bit here. Um, center on cross. Zoom in. Right, have a look at this graph. Here, this shape is described as concave. concave and here is convex. At what point do we move from being concave to convex? Right here. This is the exact point. When x is bigger than 2, we are in a convex region. When x is smaller than 2, we are in a concave region. So the answer is x is bigger than 2, it is convex. x is less than 2, concave. And this point here where it switches from concave to convex has a name. Does anyone know the name of this point where the switch between the two shapes? Inflection point. Yes. <laughs> no French in class, please. Uh, inflection point. Uh, so when you switch from convex and concave, this point, so you know, this is called an inflection point. When you switch. Yep. It doesn't have to be, usually it is, uh, but I don't think there's any rule that says it has to be in the middle. You know, it depends, in a cubic, probably. Non-cubics, maybe not. Yeah. But you're right, it's in the middle of the two. Somewhere in the middle, at least. Yeah. Okay, there is one more point to look at which we haven't done. So we've done local min, local max, global min, global max, inflection point. And the last one here is an unusual point. This graph, turning point or no turning point? Some are saying no, some are saying yes. Well, okay, let's start. Local min, local max, does it have either? No. no. Global min, global max, definitely not. But it has an inflection. But it has, a, it, this shape here is um, concave, and this shape here is convex. convex. So in the middle here is called an inflection point, when it switches between the two. But this is also a turning point. Because remember we said it's where the derivative is zero. And if I draw a tangent here, it's flat. But the problem is this turning point is not a minimum because it's bigger here. It's not a maximum because it's smaller than its neighbor here. So it's neither a minimum nor a maximum. But it's still a turning point. So in situations like that, uh, I think I called it a saddle point. Let me just check. Yeah, I did. Although there might be another name for it. But anyway, saddle point is what's used on the exam. And uh, this is a very unusual, well, not unusual. Uh, it's a situation that happens sometimes with cubics. You have a point that's not minimum, is not maximum but it's still a turning point. And so we call this situation a saddle point. Yes, when the first derivative has one 
Uh, no, because if you think about a quadratic, it has only one answer. But it's not a saddle point, it's a minimum. Yes. But only cubics. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Can I uh, scroll down? Yes. Uh, just one more thing to show you, and now I'll have to try some. Yes? Okay, I want to draw the nine possibilities you can have here, so I'll just make a, a table. So we can have the first derivative is negative, the first derivative is positive, the first derivative sorry, is zero, and the first derivative is positive, the second derivative is negative, the second derivative is zero, and the second derivative is um, positive. Okay. So we have nine different graphs to look at, and I want to see what shape we get in each nine possibilities. Okay. Um, the first derivative is negative. So, this tells us, is it increasing or decreasing? If the first derivative is negative, is it increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. So, all of these graphs are decreasing. The second derivative is negative. So, is it concave or convex? Concave. So, it's concave decreasing. So concave decreasing would look like this. Concave and decreasing. This is still concave, but the derivative is zero. So what do we call that? Not inflection point, no, the other one? No. This one here is a turning point. Because it's zero, which means it's a stationary turning point, but it's also concave. And this one is positive, so it's what? Increasing or decreasing? Increasing, and it's also concave. So concave increasing would look like this. So we get this shape here. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Uh, Dan, we'll do this one next. Second derivative is positive, so that's convex. First derivative is negative, so that's which? Come on, wakey, wakey, wakey. Increasing or decreasing? This one. This one. Oh. Decreasing. Decreasing. Decreasing <coughs> convex. So decreasing convex looks like this. This one is a turning point that's convex. So that's like this. And this one is an increasing convex. So that would be like this. Increasing convex. What's wrong? Right. When the second derivative is zero, that's an inflection point. When we switch from concave to convex. Yeah? Is it? The last one? This one? Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'll know it's wrong when you see it. This shape is not concave. What is it? Convex. So I should have drawn it. 
this way. Do you need to take it out? No. All right. This one is an inflection point. Inflection point means it switches from concave to convex or convex to concave. So if it's negative, it's a decreasing inflection point. Yeah, so it's probably like... Like this. This is decreasing inflection. This one here is increasing inflection. So it's going to be like this part here in blue. And lastly, when the first derivative and the second derivative is... Question? No. Yeah, what's the middle one? No. No. Or infinite. <laughs> we haven't said infinite yet. Um, anyone know the middle one? Is there an answer for the middle one? No. So, um, yeah. It's the question mark graph. Uh, we don't know. You can't tell what it is in situations when the first and second derivative are both zero. There's not enough information. It literally could be any shape. Yep. Okay. Can I scroll down? This is only when um, uh, x is cubic, right? No, no, this is true for any graph. Um. Okay. Can I scroll down? Yep. Okay. So, I'll let you try some for a few minutes. Let me give you the ones to try. Um, Question one, all, two, B, C, H. Question three, A, B, O, P. Yeah. This is the homework, which you should start now, please. I'll give you a few minutes, and then we'll do the next lesson. Dead. Thanks, Faisal. I, I was worried I was giving you hard ones, but no, it's good to know. OP, easy? Yeah, you're right, I didn't get it.
Do you need one of the students? Um, Can I close that? Did you write them down?